Madden 25 patch notes, gridiron notes. Brothers, we have to talk because they dropped a patch. This is September 25th, 2024, and we are going to share uh, um, the patch notes, and we're going to kind of explain uh, some of the issues that are that um, the community has shared. So we go through these patch notes. There was a lot of stuff posted this morning, um, and I'm guilty myself. Sometimes with patches, you can kind of, to a degree, overreact. It's why you want to wait for the patch notes to come out, wait for a couple of hours to kind of see, did they actually break as many things as, they, as you thought they broke? For example, uh, a lot of people thought that they just deleted all the franchises. I'm pretty sure that they were able to fix that, um, and, and people got their franchise mode back. Obviously, given what happened in Madden 23, this was a significant problem. So people were, were very sensitive to it. The fact that they were, the fact that it even happened for a minute was ridiculous. But anyways, so I want to go through these notes, and um, I actually am gonna uh, gonna show you some stuff in game as well. Kind of explain uh, a couple things post patch. Also, if you're a school member, uh, all of our eBooks are going to be receiving updates as needed uh the biggest defense that does need talked about is going to be double mug um that's the defense that received the most amount of change and ea did patch double mug and we're going to be talking about uh, uh talking about that defense uh later on but you can expect a full ebook revamp and update to double mug in our school community school community has actually been going crazy we have um over 10 offensive and defensive ebooks for madden 25 i believe we have like eight or nine for college football 25 so almost 20 ebooks so far this year we're gonna be dropping a ton more so there's already we're already working um on a ton of of, of ebooks for you guys so if you're not a member of that school site would highly encourage you to join it's only 10 bucks and it gets you access to everything every ebook all inclusive access to all the tips the full community there for just 10 bucks i think it's the easiest best place to get better at madden just because of the low price and then also all the content that we have in there so if you are looking to get better at Madden, check out the school site. The link's in the description. Let's get into the notes. So uh, welcome back to Red Our Notes, your home for news and updates from Madden 25. Our team will be here sharing information all summer. Oh, oh I'm on the wrong notes. One second. Okay, we're back. <laughs> um, all right, here's the right notes. Welcome back to Gridiron Notes. This is where you can receive the most up-to-date information about updates coming to Madden 25. Today we have gameplay updates, changes to presentation, and more, so let's dive right in. Uh, gameplay note number one, introducing the ability to save custom audibles across all modes. So they, again, and I've talked about this before, guys, what it seems like they're doing is they are updating things in College Football 25, and that update is making its way to Madden. They changed custom audibles in the last College Football 25 patch, and they added that into Madden. Only thing that was interesting is is that um, it didn't it didn't show that in practice mode. So I falsely said that they didn't do that. I everybody was expecting them to do this, um, but I didn't see that they they I didn't see in the actual game in the practice mode when I first launched on the patch that. But I tested this in game. It does work. It basically auto saves. And as it says here, you will be able to do this for up to 32 playbooks. What, I, what I'm curious is, like, what if you tried to do it for 33? Like, how would that change things? But anyways, up to 32 playbooks. There you go. Um, to change audibles, press left trigger. And basically, they just auto-save them. So as you change audibles and your formation at the play call, they will save automatically and will not change from game to game. And I, I will say this. I'm go I, <laughs> I've been very critical of EA this year, probably more critical of EA than I've ever been. I'm actually super thankful that they added this into the game. Uh, this is a quality of life thing that people have been asking for years, and they finally have this in the game. I'm actually super excited for this because it adds a lot of more depth to what you can do offensively, in my opinion, because you, you can... There, you, the whole playbook now becomes open because you can actually go through everything. So I do feel like it, it just added depth to the game, which is really something that I think this game does need. So I, I'm very thankful for this, and uh, I'm going to say you know thanks to EA for doing this. This is one of the more underrated ones, uh, tuning to increase the chances of AI-controlled defenders attempting interceptions rather than swats on catchable passes. So basically what this is trying, what this is saying is they're trying to improve. Um, it doesn't say that they fixed dropped picks. It says 
that there was coding within the game that they defenders would attempt a SWAT as opposed to a pick on an obvious situation where you would go for a pick. Hopefully, this also means that you will catch picks better. I don't think that it does. I simply think that this um, this is this is good. It's a good change, uh, but it doesn't solve the core issue. And you're gonna. This is gonna be the theme of this video. EA has a tendency to band-aid fix a lot of things, and they don't solve the core issue of the thing. So um, let's just keep going through this. But that is this is these are the two best changes. This is probably why they put them up here. Okay. Uh, tuning to make AI-controlled wide receivers play more aggressively to the catch point when targeted. Don't really care about that. It's cool because um, I would click onto the receiver and aggressive catch myself, okay? Uh, tuning to improve wide receivers' feet staying in bounds on catchable passes near the sideline. Actually, that's cool. Uh, good fix. Fix an issue where AI-controlled quarterbacks would check the ball down to a receiver coming out of the backfield too quickly when they were not under pressure. I don't really care about that. I don't know. I'm not going to deal with that, honestly, because um, there's just nothing that needs to really be talked about there. Fix an issue preventing defensive backs. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, this, this, um, this was a slight fix. Uh, fix an issue preventing defensive backs from matching press animations when running the cover one robber press. Defensive play against streak, curl, and inside release dig routes. Basically, this was a this has been a glitch since College Football 25 first came out, where if you stemmed a curl all the way up, even if you or if you stemmed an in route all the way up, typically, but specifically a curl route, um, it would basically just glitch the the press man. Now that doesn't happen anymore. So cool, um, the good fix. A lot of people that then did not think they were going to be able to fix that, but they did. Uh, fix an issue causing the quarterback to keep the ball on a run play when using multiple pre-play adjustments at the same time. This was one of the bugs I believe Astro shared publicly after one of the tournament ladders uh, or one of the, one of the um, not ter or a limb days to basically qualify for the live event. This was um, a kind of a quarterback sneak glitch, if you will. So good that they fixed that. Fixed an issue preventing pass blockers from handing – okay, here we go. Fixed an issue preventing pass blockers from handing off pass rushers to other blockers versus a defensive line crash inside. This is a straight-up lie that they have in their patch notes, and we're going to show you why. All right, boys, so we're in practice mode, and this does work in-game before I get any of those comments. Um, a lot of people, you know, say – I'm not going to say blitzes don't work differently in-game than practice mode, but it's normally not wholesale differently. It's normally like oftentimes the blitz is more effective in-game. I'm going to leave that at that, but in general, um, this works in-game. In it works in practice mode, okay? It's just easier to show and teach in practice mode. Double mug. So uh, double mug is the main defense in which you would want to slant your D-line inside. Okay, hopefully we can all agree on that. And we're going to show this real quick and explain what's going on. Okay, so I'm gonna, I want to go back over here and I want to read this to you guys word for word. It says, fixed an issue preventing pass blockers from handing off pass rushers to other blockers versus defensive line crash inside. That's what it says. I'm going to crash my line inside, okay? We don't need to blitz these outside guys. And you see, this is what the defense looks like. We crashed inside. That's all we did. And what you're going to see here is they did not do a really good job of passing off the blockers on the defensive line crash inside. As you can see, this left tackle is going to block nobody, and this left defensive tackle is going to come inside, and he's going to come completely free, and they're not passing off anything. It's a straight-up lie from EA because of, of, of what's going on, okay? So I'm going to leave that there. We're going to talk more about double mug in a minute. 
But that double mug is the main defense. Now, you know what? While we're here, actually, let's actually go over this. This is something very little. Um, I don't know if this is going to turn into anything, but I want to explain this. So the main defense that they did actually fix, and this was a couple patches ago, so it's not this patch. I understand that, but I just want you to kind of hopefully see the point, was the 4-3 over, pinch, slant, and side. And as you can see, you can't get those blitz angles. So when you slant and side, look at what happens. You know, you're not able to get that instant rush. Now you're getting sheds, right? You're getting sheds. But you're not able to get that, that pinch, slant, and side disengage. The same thing is true if I try to do this out of 6-1. So if I pinch my defensive line and I slant them inside, you see here it doesn't give me the blitz angles that I want. And this is not an effective, it's not effective, right? We're shedding, we're not disengaging. But what if I just slant it inside? What if I just slant it inside? Watch this. Occasionally, I was labbing this earlier occasionally they'll just walk in free. So I'm not exactly sure why that's the case yet. I have, I think it's because, and you see, see how it's kind of disengaging. And again, let me, let me actually base a line and kind of give you a, a good look here and put some faster dudes in. But if you put two fast dudes at defensive tackle, I bet you we could get this to kind of disengage a little bit. So let's, um let's kind of tweak some things here. Let's put some, um, let's put some linebackers in kind of make things a little better and let's auto flip off and base the line okay and again this is just this is just something i was kind of messing with i don't have it yet but i just want to show this like look, look look at that look at what just happened on the left side so if you if you watch this in replay i want you to look at what the guard is doing what the what the game has coded the guard to do and this is this is why double mug is good this is why all those defenses are good okay so i want you to watch what this guard does at the snap of the ball if I don't know what's going on with my controller here. Okay. So you see how he fans out to the left? You see here that that is always going to be a quick shed. It actually will always be a quick shed like that. And the reason why is because he fans out to the left. This guy pinches. This is the default way that they're going to they're gonna pick up blitzes. So let me show it again. This time, let's, let's just crash to the right and see if we can't get this to come in. And you see what we're see what we're able to see there, hopefully. So again, this is not a not a blitz setup by any means, not a full thing, but I just wanted to kind of show one of the big issues with this game is there I don't know I don't know exactly how to explain it, but I think in order for them to kind of improve the ability to pick up edge rush, edge edge blitzes like DB Fire, they're now leaving this right here open, this A gap. So you see how that guard and this where you're seeing we kind of put some things together here. But if we were to get this center to go to the right quick enough, you see how we're almost getting that – see, and that's a disengage. So that's, that's kind of what I wanted to just kind of show and explain. And th what this means is you could do stuff like this. You could send four and, and have a decent chance of an A-gap. You see there, that's more of a disengage than a true shed. But anyway, I'm going to leave that there, and I'm going to explain it through a lens of another formation. And that formation is 5-2. So if we have auto flip off and we come out in this play pinch, I want you to take a look here what can happen. So you see how we have this A-gap blitzer here. We can drop this guy in whatever we want. We can probably drop the, the left side guy in whatever we want to, but we'll just leave this at, at, at basically this. Actually, let me um, – let me see, I might have messed it up. We'll just send the blitz here. But basically what I'm trying to say is because of the left guard always doing what he's doing where he slants outside like that or he takes that movement outside, that's why these left A-gap blitzes are as good as they are, okay? Um, and we'll, we'll explain that through the lens of, of dollar. I don't know if this still works out of dollar or not. This was something that was really good at the beginning of the year. We'll go out and hot blitz three I believe and I think this is the lights out blitz so you see how he, he goes right there so if we pinch slant and side like this and let's say we let's just say we user this guy for example we should be able to trigger this a gap you see how we're getting that disengage on the left and again that's all triggered because of the way they've coded the left guard so I just want to kind of go into a little bit of detail and explain why this blitz is is as good as it is okay it it's because they're trying to make it so you can't run DB fire. 
and in doing so, they're they're now letting the pressure come right down the middle, which is also why free safety zone blitz, all those deep by double mug, all those defenses work. Okay. So let's just kind of finish up the notes, and then I'm going to go back to double mug and kind of explain some things. Fix a rare issue causing the ball to warp through a defender's body when attempting to make an interception. It was not a rare issue. It happened all the time. Uh, fixed a rare issue, sometimes causing a tackler to freeze after a hit stick. I actually noticed that quite a bit as well. Um, and that's pretty much it. So um, what's also funny to me, so I want to go back to this note. This is the note that I really wanted to actually talk about. It's this right here. This is the main thing that everybody was expecting to be patched in this game. They were all, and notice we don't see anything in this patch notes about tuning to zone coverage. Zone coverage has been the biggest issue with this game. You can throw a seam streak in zones. There's not a zone in this game that'll guard it. The zone coverage logic has been the biggest problem with Madden 25. And the only reason it's not a bigger problem is because of switch stick. If switch stick wasn't in this game, Every single game would be 77 to 70. And at the beginning of the year, before people really, I think, got good with switch, stick, switch sticking, every game was 70 to 70. Now you're getting maybe one or two stops a game, but you're still not getting a ton of stops. And it's not because you can't, it's not because you don't know what to do defensively. It's because you can't actually cover anything. So it doesn't matter if you're one of the best players in the world or you're an average player. Both players can have a significant amount of success on the offensive side of the ball because zone coverage logic has no logic. Zone coverage logic literally has no logic in this game. So the main thing that they did in this patch, the main thing that they wanted to do in this patch, and the main thing that everybody was expecting them to do in this patch was patch double mug. Fixed an I Notice the specific wording. Fixed an issue preventing pass blockers from handing off pass rushers to other blockers versus defensive line crash inside. Well, let me tell you what they actually did. They actually simply changed how you pinch your defensive line. It should have said versus a pinched defensive line. Because if I pinch my defensive line, you notice that they do not pinch like they used to. That, my friends, is what they actually changed in this patch. And as you can see, that double mug is not as good as the one I showed you in the beginning. So what's the workaround, you ask? Well, it's really simple. Just don't, don't pinch your defensive line. All you have to do is slant your defensive line inside. And as you can see, we're going to get the disengage A-gap pretty much every single time. And that A-gap can come from the left. It can come from the right. The other thing is this, um, this also, and I'll show, that, uh, I'll show that in just a moment. But you'll see here, boom, and as you can see, this, this uh, to a degree comes in. Now, what's really interesting to me, and this, is, this was my big thing that I wanted to talk about in the videos. We're kind of getting here. They changed how I can pinch my line in this, right? Okay. But what about, and this is, this is what I said in the beginning, where they don't actually fix anything. They just kind of Band-Aid fix stuff. Nickel wide, I'm going to pinch my defense, slant my D-line inside, and guess what? When I slant my D-line inside, they come inside every single time, and this might be even a better blitz than what we were able to do out of double mug. And my point is, this has been being ran all year. People have been running this all year, and what they did was they tried to Band-Aid fix double mug that didn't ultimately fix the disengage issue and the actual issue of the slant inside causing the blockers to have problems. And so now we can just go to nickel wide and do the same exact thing. And it's probably even better. As you see, I get a guy screaming right through the middle and look at the improved pass blocking logic. Look at the way that the offensive line just does a fantastic job of passing off blockers against a defensive line slant inside or crash inside. The funny part to me also, guys, is when I if I pull my defensive line menu up, it doesn't say slant inside. It doesn't say crash inside. It says slant inside. They can't even put the right freaking words in, in what they actually are doing. It's unreal to me that they continue to drop patches like this. We are three, I think we might even be four patches into the game this year, and this blitz still works. Not only does this blitz work in Madden, it works in College Football 25, and it is the without a doubt clear-cut best blitz in the game 
on both games. The games are not that much different. They're actually very similar because EA makes it that way. That being said, I'm going to close this video by going over dollar. Um, a lot of people have asked me, you know, is this defense still as good as it was uh, pre-patch? It 100% is as good as it was uh, pre-patch. We actually just dropped a massive update to the defense in our school community. If you're not a member over there yet, make sure you sign up for that. That link's going to be in the description. We now have a really good effective way of blitzing on the left hash. Um, a lot of people have kind of come to the conclusion of something that we literally told our members day one of the game, that this blitz is a right hash dependent blitz. And so what you're going to see here is we're going to get this guy right down the middle. Why are we able to do that? Because the left guard kicks out every single time, especially on this, on this, um, on this right hash and so you'll see here we're able to do this and he comes right through the middle now the last thing that i want to say about this defense is that you do need a solution for um one of the best pass protections that they will do is they will double team this right side guy right i've had people tell me oh i'll just double team this guy and it blocks the a gap well, yeah it blocks the a gap but what if i send edge blitz what if I send edge blitz like this and he loops around and as you see there, he's going to basically get a nice little pass rush angle and he's going to be able to loop over that defensive end. This is also the method that I will use to be able, and this is why dollar is in my opinion, the most overall best comp defense uh, because there's so many different ways to get pressure. Uh, whereas double mug, it's basically just the disengage defense, but you see here, we're able to get this pressure off that edge we're able to kind of have an entire entire scheme, uh, an entire blitzing scheme, not just around the A-gap, but then how they block the A-gap. One of the ways that they block the A-gap, you know, is they're going to try to uh, basically do a double team, a double team either on the nose tackle or a double team on the DN. Well, then we can just send these edge blitzers, and oftentimes they're going to come in completely free. So dollar, in my opinion, I think the, the double mug blitz is still good. Um, you just don't pinch your line. Uh, the other thing that you're noticing that changed, and this one is one of the ones that a lot of people got frustrated with, is the, is the uh, camera angle is, is not very good. If you want to solve this, it just hit circle before you snap the ball, and it'll zoom it out so you can actually see. But I think this is one of the most ridiculous changes that they made. Nobody wanted this. Nobody asked for this. And, you know, they're continuing to make stupid changes instead of actually making changes that would benefit everybody that play this game. So that's all I'm going to say about the patch, guys. If you guys want to check out the updated ebooks, those will all be in the description. Uh, they're, they're all in the school community, which is linked in the description. Thanks for watching the video. And uh, hopefully in October we will patch the double mug.